G'day guys, my name's Nick and this is my channel Low Range Nick where I do videos about four driving, accessory fitting and maintenance for your four drive vehicle. So today's video is an exciting one. So the MUX is going to get a Unichip. So a Unichip is like a piggyback ECU, it's like a tuning module. So I'm basically going to fit it here at home, load the files and then I'm going to run down to our Cool Motors Dyno Shed. Uh, which is down in our industrial area at Coolum Beach and uh, put it on the mainline dyno there and then do a couple of runs and see what sort of power we're getting uh, between the different maps. So in the Unichip box, this is what you get. So you basically get your two modules, the tuning modules. You get some Velcro sticky tape to stick the modules down. You get these two little plugs so these two little plugs in here are your blanking plugs. So if you ever have any issues with the, uh, you know, the wiring or the modules or anything, you just unplug them, put these piggyback blanking plugs in, and that will pretty much cancel out anything that the Unichip has to do with the wiring harness. And in this little box, you get your little map selector switch. So I've gone for the uh, five map selector switch, looks like that. Just a little select a switch for the dash and then obviously you've got your wiring harness here. So I'm going to start now by wiring up the Unichip modules. So basically the first thing I need to do is just locate the engine computer and gain access to it. So we'll do that now. Okay guys, so I've just come into the passenger side footwell here and now the engine computer is up behind here. So basically I'm going to pull this side kick panel trim off and I'm going to even take the glove box out and this whole trim, just so I can show you exactly what you need to do uh, and make it really easy to see. So there's a little bit of a close up of it. So there's your engine computer just in here with all the plugs. Make sure that your vehicle is completely off. And what we'll do is we'll start by unplugging all these plugs on the engine computer here. So now what we do is come back to this wiring from the Unichip. We unplug all these plugs. So now that I've got all these plugs out, basically what I'm going to do is just push them down into the uh, footwell down underneath here. Push these ones down into there as well. Pull them through. And then I'll be able to start wiring up this little module here. So usually, because you see these little cutouts here. On each plug, they'll have an individual cutout. So it should be, I say should be, impossible to mix them up. Because every little cutout is different for each plug. So now that all the plugs from the ECU are plugged into the wiring loom for the Unichip, I take all these loose ends and I plug these back into my engine computer. So these are the remaining wires and now these ones, that plugs into your map selector switch this one plugs into your Unichip module and then these ones also plug into your Unichip modules. So the last thing we need to run is the earth cable just to a good body earth. So we'll find one around here, I'll have a bit of a look and see where the closest one is and then just run that. 
So just up there you can see that little uh, 10 mil bolt hole. So all I'm going to do is just uh, use a little screwdriver and a little bit of sandpaper and just clean up a little bit of a contact point on top of there and I'll use that as my earthing point for the uni chip. So there's the earth contact, it's all tightened up now. So now with these remaining wires I've got left, now it's time to plug in the modules. So we've got a couple of little plugs here. Just plug in there, there, a little small one for that end bit. Now we've got the uh, injector driver module. So that's got one plug here. Just plug in like that until it clips in. Just double check they're all really well clipped in. They're not going anywhere. And this is the map select switch right here. So you can see it's got a little plug. And it basically just goes on here. And then I can run that wherever I like in the car to be able to select through the different map sets that are logged into the uni chip. So what I'm going to do now before I tidy all the wiring up is I'm going to load the map sets onto the Unichip module. So I use this little module here and I plug that into the Unichip, into the Unichip Q4, like that, into the remaining plug. And now I need my laptop and a special program and I'll be able to upload the map sets to the computer and then download them back to the Unichip Q4. So I'll just plug this USB into the computer. So now I need to open my UniQ program, which is the Unichip program. So now I've got the program open. I'm just going to turn the ignition on. So basically what I'll do now is I'll go into our tools and I'll upload all the map sets. So as you can see it's loading all the map sets off the uh, Unichip. So there's five different map sets and we just want to make sure that they all go through successfully. So basically all we do now that my map sets have gone through and they've all gone through successfully is I download all these map sets back to the Unichip. So I control D and you can see this will go through now and this will download all those map sets from the computer back to the Unichip. Awesome. So there you go, all the map sets have downloaded from the computer back to the Unichip and we're all good to go. So now all those files have been written to the Unichip modules. So my map select switch is now lighting up. As you can see it's on map 1 at the moment which is the power map. So I'm just going to start the car up and make sure there's no warning messages. We're all good. Look at that. Cool. So I'm just going to quickly put the glove box back in and then I'm going to leave that side kick panel trim off just so I can gain access to the Unichip modules when I'm down at the dyno just in case I need to make any changes. Okay, 
So now both of these are tied down really nice and tight. Now it's time to put the air fuel ratio probe in. So this is the air fuel ratio probe. Just put that in the exhaust and then that can give us the air fuel ratio readout on our dyno. So this computer runs basically everything to do with the dyno. So I'm just going to change a few things to customise it for my vehicle. So I'm going to change it to a rear wheel drive, two wheel drive vehicle. And now I'm just going to do a new customer profile. So I'm going to make one for myself. So this little OBD dongle basically goes into the OBD port and it reads out all the OBD information that the dyno needs. So basically what I'm going to do now is, the car's all set up to go on the dyno, I'm going to do a couple of runs on each of the different map sets on the uni chip. So what you can see here is the graphs of the two runs I've done. So these two runs are just the standard first run, which is the blue, and then the power run, which was the last one I did. So you can see we've had about a 20 kilowatt increase in power. So this is our air fuel ratio across the whole RPM. So you can see that it's sitting around 19.8, 19.27 is the uh, power run, which is really good air fuel ratio, it's quite lean. So I'm not quite happy with these power figures just yet. So I'm going to do a little bit more tweaking on the uh, uni chip and increase the boost and the fuel a little bit more and see if I can get a little bit more safe power out of it. Alrighty guys, so I finished mucking around with the uni chip. So the max power I got was 115 kilowatts and the standard power was 90 kilowatts. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I'll show you the dyno graphs now. So here you can see the dyno graph. So basically what we've got is our standard run here. So 90 kilowatt and our power run here which is on the map one power map so 115 kilowatt so down here you can see the torque so you can see the standard run was about 540 newton meters and the uh, power run was 641 so here you can see the different graphs that we're looking at so you can see the kilowatt figures here torque figures down here and our air fuel ratios here so as we go across you can see uh, the difference between a standard run and the modified run so it's still running very good air fuel ratios right across the board. So now guys I'm just going to rip the MUX off the dyno, take it for a road test, make sure it's all good and then tidy up all the wiring underneath the dash. Okay guys so I've refitted this side kick panel trim and I've just tidied up all the wiring, all the in chip wiring up under the dash. So I've also fitted the 5 map select switch, so you can see my different maps here and the up and down buttons to change between each of the map sets. So I've just given a road test on the way home and the car drives really well. So the extra power and torque, you can really notice that. It is bloody awesome. It puts a smile on your face, it's really cool. So apart from that, having the 5 map select switch, you can you know change between map sets and you can basically drive in whatever map set you find comfortable or you want at that point in time. So if you're just cruising along the highway, you can put it in economy, you can save a bit of fuel, a little bit less power, but it's still more power than standard. So perfect for towing. And then you have your full power map, which is uh, obviously putting out really great power and torque figures over standard. And then you have map set five, which is your immobilizer, which if you leave it in that map set, people cannot drive off with your car. It will start but it will not drive anywhere. There's no throttle input at all. So map set four is your stock map set. So if you ever want to put it into the stock map set, you can put it back. And 
number three is your off-roading or full drive map set. So if you have any questions about ECU tuning, about the Safari R maps or about the Unichip, just give the guys at Cool Motors a ring and they will help you out with any questions you have. So I'll put all the links down in the description below for Cool Motors website and also their phone number and email if you'd like to get in contact. So thanks a lot for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos on the Asuzu MUX. So the week after I fitted the Uni chip, I ended up going back down to the dyno and having a little bit more of a muck around with the Uni chip and tweaking it just a little bit more. And I managed to get a little bit more power and torque out of it. So these are my final figures.